Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Ken Slusher, who is N2DF, November 2, Delta Foxtrot. And he has a question about G5RV antennas. And he said that um, can extending a G5 RV, meaning making it longer, uh, help? Uh, my antenna setup is typical G5 RV fed with ladder line that transitions to coax via a ballon at the point of entry a window. The coax then goes to a wide range transmatch. But for max efficiency and uh, transmatch is the same thing as the antenna tuner. But for maximum efficiency and performance, shouldn't the ballon actually be mounted inside the transmatch. And are there any safety concerns with running full legal limit power through that ladder line since the insulation on that line appears to be relatively thin? Are there high voltages on that line that could zap you or arc over? And we'll take a close look at this. It brings up some interesting points. Uh, before we jump into this, I want to pay a special thank you to Adam Schindler, uh, my newest patron. You too can become a patron at patreon.com slash ke0og. Now, let's take a look at this question. First of all, there is a misunderstanding about the G5 RV antenna. Okay, the G5 RV antenna, and this is taken from the uh, 23rd edition of the antenna book. Okay. Some people think that 102 foot piece of wire is a G5 antenna. That's not quite correct. It's, it's, it's getting there, but the G5 RV antenna consists of the 102 foot piece of wire plus a matching stub of a half wavelength. Uh, here it's 34.8 feet, 450 ohm window line. This is assuming a 0.9 three velocity factor in the open wire line or uh, ladder line as shown here. Now the book says the G5 RV multiband antenna covers three and a half through 30 megahertz. Although many amateurs claim it may be fed directly with 50 ohm coax on several amateur bands, that would be feeding it here with coax. Down here, not up here, down here. Okay, Louis Varney, the original. Louis Varney is G5RV, that's an actual call sign. Its originator recommends the use of a matching network on bands other than 14 megahertz. That matching network could go right here. Okay, by the way, if you're gonna put a ballon here, it should be four, well, 450 ohms to 50 is, is nine to one. But again, this is a matching stub. So any transformer you put in there is going to create an issue. Now, what some people do is think, oh, this is just a ladder line fed piece of wire. And so they extend that ladder line all the way into their station or to a ballon or something. This is a matching stub, okay? And it should be 50 ohms here. Should be, should be. Now, I have never had good luck with G5 RV antennas, and I do not recommend them. A better antenna that a lot of people like, I've never tried one, is the ZS6 BKW design from South Africa. Okay, slightly shorter. Okay, 93 feet instead of 102. Um, again, a length of matching section and a current ballon. A current ballon here, okay. Um, and you can buy those readily enough. And then 50 ohm coax as long as you need, okay? Again, based on a velocity factor 0.91 here, the velocity factor in wire is about 0.95, okay? So this again is the misconception. Now, if you lengthen this, okay, you are simply feeding a long wire, unmatched antenna with ladder line, which can be tuned with a wide range tuner. It's not a G5 RV anymore. And this, you can just put any length of ladder line. And remember that 
450 ohms connected to 50 is a ratio of 9 to 1. So you would bring that into a 9 to 1 ballon at the shack and then 50 ohm coax the rest of the way in. And that will work. You can tune that on any band. It will not be resonant on any band, but you can make it resonant, which means that the current through the circulating currents going back and forth in this between the not resonant point and so on, you'll have high circulating currents on the antenna too. And you'll lose some power due to the ohmic resistance in here. Okay, let's take another look at this question. He uh, wants to know, um, are there any safety concerns with running full legal power through that ladder line since the insulation on that line appears to be relatively thin. It's actually quite thick if you think about it. You've got a wire, two wires apart with the plastic insert and you should be using standoff insulators anyway with this. This can handle up to 10,000 volts because we're talking about between here and here. Now, the wire is only 16 uh, gauge in most ladder line, which is a little thin for transmitting that much power, but you can play the games with the numbers and you're probably okay if you use sideband or some uh, low, um, low duty cycle mode. Okay. Um, are there high voltages on that line that could zap you or arc over? Yes, it can zap you. That's why you keep it on these standoffs all the way out and then bring it to your balanced to unbalanced 9 to 1. Put it in. Now, again, if this is being used as a matching stub, then you don't want to put a ballon here other than a like this, a one-to-one. -one. And he specifies a current bell. Okay, and I'd go ahead and, and get one for that. If you look at these things, they come packaged. Uh, you can get these, I think, from DX Engineering. Okay, so, Adam, I, I hope that answers your question and gives you the information that you're looking for. Uh, if you've got a G5 RV antenna setup that works, uh, be glad. I was never able to make my G5 RV work. Uh, it was at a time when uh, we had uh, babies, a uh, very big mortgage for us at the time. Um, I was working and there wasn't much leftover money. And I finally gathered a hundred bucks that I thought I could spend on something. And I went down to Ham Radio Outlet in Denver and got a G5 RV antenna. And I connected coax to it and it, it just wouldn't resonate anywhere. I had no antenna tuner or anything like it at the time. And I had a transistorized rig, so I had to match the 50 ohms. So um, I uh, took the G5 RV back and they were very gracious in accepting it back because it had been strung up. Um, and I traded it for another $100 item, which was little MFJ tuner. And then uh, that was my first tuner. I still have it. And uh, was able to, to do pretty good. I had a, a little Micronta SWR meter left over from uh, CB days when I was a teenager uh, that I used too. So that was a long time ago. You can take almost any length of wire, feed it in the center with the uh, ladder line, bring it down to 9 to 1 ballon and into the shack. I would not recommend taking the wire all the way into the transmatch because then you've got, if there's any imbalance on that line at all, you're going to have RFI in the shack. So I like to keep the ladder line out of the shack. And you can resonate it on any band. Is it the best antenna? I really don't think so. The longer you make an antenna, the narrower the lobes are off each side, okay? And it will less and less and less uh, transmit off the ends. 
But anyway, you, I, I hope that answers your question. If, uh, you're, if you extend it and it works better, then great. But, um, and you can get different ladder line that is uh, stronger, has higher impacity. Okay, the classic way for feeding wires to antennas is a parallel line and a transmission line, but they could be really thick lines. The, now remember that the impedance of the transmission line is a uh, function of the diameter of the wire and the distance apart. So if you put in stronger wires, you've got to separate them more to keep the same 450 ohms. And you can play games with just how you do that. Can you make your own ladder line? Absolutely, you can, and people do. You just create a bunch of nylon spacers or something, and, and you can make it work. Okay, so uh, there you have it, um, Ken, and I hope that uh, that answers your question. And to DF in Woodbourne, New York, um, if any of you have watched this far in the video, maybe you'd like to help support this video financially. You can do so by going to decastlercom support and finding a way that works for you. Until we next meet, 73.